everyone, I'm Kerry Griffiths and this is Willowbrook Lifestyle Financial Planning YouTube channel. Welcome along to this special edition. What we're going to be talking about today is domestic violence and domestic abuse. It's actually specifically timed because we're in the middle of the 16 days of activism against gender-based violence. It started on Wednesday, which was International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women. And it's gonna end on the 10th of December, which is International Human Rights Day. So I have invited along a special guest and there was only one person I could think of <laughs> to do this video, and, and that's Karen. So Karen is a divorce coach, but Karen has actually got um, a lot of experience in this field because she not only only has suffered abuse herself but she's worked with many many clients who have done as well and she also has been a volunteer and an advocate for domestic abuse and still currently works for the dash charity um, giving her help and her support her support and her experience there so welcome along karen how are you doing yeah great thank you yeah great i've been doing quite a bit of promotion around white ribbon day so yeah i know yeah I but it Got your white ribbon on today mm. fabulous karen do you want to just tell us a little bit more for those who haven't had the luxury of meeting you yet okay so um i like you said i was in an, uh, an abusive relationship for a number of years uh quite a few years ago now um, managed to get out of it but at the time there was really no help around and people didn't really talk about it so i didn't really know that it was domestic abuse as such that uh, back back then but luckily I did get out of it and um, what I did a few years afterwards was I trained as an independent domestic violence advocate with the Dash charity and I've been working there for about 14 years now mm -hmm. uh, and done lots of different roles within the charity one of which is working as a trainer now so I train people on domestic abuse so that's what I've been doing Earlier uh, this week around White Ribbon Day, I was training a load of mental health first aiders around how to spot the signs um, so that they could make a difference in their workplace and make it a safer space for anybody that is going through this. Um, and then last year, I also trained as a coach. So now I see people one to one. I see people virtually at all different stages of divorce and separation and of course many of those clients that gravitate towards me are those that are suffering from various types of domestic abuse including financial abuse emotional abuse obviously and often there's a lot of conflict around the children and parenting and coercive control and those kind of things such a complex picture um, and, and actually this year even more complex than normal so this activism period is something that um, has been ongoing for a number of years since at least 2013 but I can't remember exactly when it started but this year particularly important given the fact that we have seen lockdown have such an impact on all of us but particularly when you're in a relationship where um, there, there is abuse, as you said, of, of all these different kinds where there is this domestic abuse. Um, so, Karen, should we talk a little bit about kind of how that's played out and, and really, I suppose, how lockdown has impacted that picture? Yeah, I think, um, like you said, this year has just been really, really difficult for so many people in so many ways, but particularly if you are going through domestic abuse and then you're in the middle of a lockdown and a pandemic that is just just throws even more into the mix you know more stressors more challenges more barriers to leave in so yeah it, it just makes things a lot more difficult however there is a flip side too and there has been a lot more awareness around how it's impacted people at home and much more, um, many more conversations about domestic abuse and what people can do to help and what help there is available. So hopefully that has helped people find the help that they need sooner. I know for us at Dash, our referrals have tripled since March. Um, you know, we've never experienced anything like the rate of referrals that we've had this year. Um, it's which is sad, but it's also 
meaning that people are reaching out and they are actually finding a way to get the help that they need because domestic abuse didn't just start in March. It didn't just start in the pandemic. It's obviously been going on before that, but just this awareness and the fact that people are really thinking about, you know, their lives and, you know, whether now is the time to make that break and make that change. It's just kind of brought it to the forefront just fantastic um, what you say it yeah really fantastic and and that's what this campaign aims to do as well is keep that conversation going make sure that people like employers away are aware of the part that they could play and just get it onto people's radar um one of the things that i'm really keen to find out a little bit more about karen uh, particularly for the audience listening today if you are a woman and you are experiencing domestic abuse what support is available well there's loads of support and that's the important thing to remember um you know they don't have to go through this on their own so obviously you've got the police in an emergency you know if you are really in fear if you're worried about risk the police that are the you, you know the emergency service to go through if you don't feel that you're getting the right response you just have to keep asking right and you have to keep reporting and <clears throat> if you don't want to report to the police a lot of people don't that's absolutely your choice um, but you can go to somewhere like the Dash Charity, your local domestic abuse organisation. So each um, county in the UK will have their own um, organisations. They're all called different names, which can be a bit confusing. And sometimes depending on which borough you live in, you know, you come under a different organisation. Unfortunately, because they're all charitable organisations and because of the way that they're funded, um, it does vary very much from county to county. But if you just do something simple like Google domestic abuse support in, say, Berkshire or wherever, it should come up with your local council website. Mm -hmm. And on there should be a number that says, if you're concerned about domestic abuse, call this number. Right. And that number will be confidential. So anything that you say to the person on the other end of that phone is 100% confidential. The person that's abusing you will not be made aware that you have called. They will explain all the different options that are open to you. Um, you know, you may want to go to refuge because you just feel that it's just impossible to stay at home anymore. Um, refuges are still taking in referrals throughout lockdown. Doesn't matter what tier you're in, right? You can leave. There's always a safe space for you to go if you are feeling that you are really at risk. If you don't want to go to refuge and you want to stay at home, uh, in your home area with your support network, you know, to keep your job, to keep your kids in school, to keep all of that support around you, then again, you can do that. But what the organization will do is they will organize safety measures to be put in place in your home, if that's appropriate. They will link you up with free legal advice so that you can look to get some protective orders at court to protect you and your children. Um, if that's appropriate, they will go through whatever is going on in your particular situation. They will look at the risks. They will look at the support that you need. They will advise you of all the different options. And then the choice that you make is yours. OK, so it's all done at your pace. If you don't want to do something, that's absolutely fine. You know, this is about you taking control back over your life and deciding what path you want to go down. So there's never any pressure um, to, to do anything that you don't want to do. Um, they will talk through the different tactics that abusers use to really make you understand what's going on because that can be quite difficult to to understand and quite difficult to articulate um, especially if it's not physical so they'll help you really understand that and they'll also look at your children um, to see if there's any support that is needed for your children um, whilst you're all going through this so it's a whole range of support and then obviously if you if you feel like you don't want to contact a, a specific domestic abuse organization like that then of course you've got the option of going to somebody like myself who's a divorce coach who specializes in domestic abuse so i would 
the way that I support is, is again, it's, it's confidential, but it's very personalized. So you have one-to-one -one sessions with myself um, and we talk through whatever are the main concerns at the time. So whether it's, it's actions that you want to put in place or whether it's really understanding your relationship or whether it is that emotional support that you need. So there's all different ways that you can get support. Um, there's, there's, you know, different options for everybody. I love, I love that explanation, Karen. And I think it is particularly reassuring to know that it's confidential, to know that it's options based and how much, how much significant support there is out there. You know, the legal, the free legal support if needed, you know, being able to understand what the abuse looks like. That's amazing. So I hope, you know, if you're a woman listening today and you have even an inkling that there's some domestic abuse, because as Karen said, you know, some of it's obvious, you know, physical abuse, if that's you, you're you're probably well aware but the coercive control hopefully is starting to get on your radar and this might be kind of worth a call and worth just kind of investigating a little bit more um, and Karen from that perspective for women who are listening and they're not in that situation or for professionals listening because a lot of my colleagues will listen along to this for, for all of us who are working in this field or our friends and our family, what can we do to support? How can we, if we are suspicious or if we think there might be a case where somebody is experiencing abuse, what can we do? So it's about trying to put the pieces of the puzzle together. Um, some of the signs are quite subtle and um, it's very difficult for somebody to actually say i'm experiencing abuse you know my husband is hitting me or you know he's emotionally abusive you know they might use different words they might not actually say the word abuse yeah. they might just drop little hints you know he always criticizes me he's uh, criticizes me he's always putting me down or you know they might just say certain things that make you think mm, could that be that she is being abused so if you can prompt them, that's just a really good first step. If you can validate how they're feeling, if you can say, well, that sounds like it's emotional, emotional abuse, or that sounds like it's financial abuse, or that sounds like it's quite controlling, you're, what you're doing is you're planting the seed and you're getting them to think about it. And they may, they may suddenly go, oh, well, maybe that is abuse then, you know, maybe they didn't recognize it as abuse in the first place. So you can go a bit further. You can offer to make a call for them just to get some advice. Like you said, to get some clarity on what is going on. Um, if it's a client of yours, uh, you may have had contact with them before and you may have noticed like some deterioration over a number of weeks, you may have noticed that they're more withdrawn, that maybe they've lost a bit of weight, maybe they look really stressed and overwhelmed, quite tearful, you know, just ask them the question, you know, why is that? What's going on? You know, do you want to talk to me about it? Obviously, I'm very aware that in these kind of situations, um, a lot of the time, you know, there is some controlling behavior going on, or maybe there's some abuse. Is that happening to you? If you can say those kind of things and start that conversation, it will help that person feel more confident about disclosing more about what's happening. Mm -hmm. And then you can come in and say, look, there is help available. Look, I know you can ring these people. It's confidential and you can kind of talk them through it a little bit. Amazing. Um, and it, if, if you hear something that's going on, you know, if you hear a neighbour and you hear shouting and even screaming or things that are really quite concerning, please just pick up the phone, call the police, you know, don't be worried about getting it wrong. Don't think, oh God, I'm going to get into trouble. You know, what if it's just a one-off argument? If it sounds concerning enough to worry you, then just pick up the phone. You're, you don't have to investigate. That's the police's job, right? But I always think if I didn't pick up that phone and something happened, you know, that was really serious, how would I feel? I would rather pick up the phone and get it wrong than not pick up the phone. 
and something happen. Yeah, absolutely. Fabulous. Karen, thank you so much for your advice and your input. Really hope this helps raise a little bit more awareness. I certainly feel more empowered and more able to help a woman should this situation come along. So thank you. And I, I really enjoyed having you on as a guest again. Take care. Thanks, Chloe. Thank you.